Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle-Earth painting tutorial. Forget Uruk thighs, this time we're tackling the meatiest thighs in the Middle-Earth range. This is the Keeper of the Dungeon. This is the new Forge World sculpt, which many have said is by the Perry Twins, famous for of course being the 40k and lots of Lord of the Rings um, sculptors for Games Workshop. It, it's actually not, it's not by them. Uh, I have it on very good authority, but it's by a chap called uh, Edgar Ramos. So kudos to him because it's absolutely amazing. I'd say it's definitely my favourite orc sculpt. I think they've ever released and I'm honestly not really usually much of a Hobbit era fan but anyway this is a painting tutorial so let's start uh, with lead belcher on all of the metals uh, there are some bits tucked away under the furry feathery thing on his back so keep an eye out for that and there's also some bolted to his head but I'll come back to that later on so don't worry about that for now if you try painting the skin after that bolted on thing then you'll be a bit screwed <coughs> Also note, uh, I've used a generation shift base for this. If you just search on Facebook or YouTube for, for them, um, there, there's a, a Dol Guldor base for sale for really great value and they're really nice bases. I've put the whole of the Dol Guldor ring wraiths on them so it matches here. Next, it's leg day, and to paint those beastly bad boys up, I use rotting flesh, which is nurgling green in the new GW paints. It's a lovely sickly green tinged cream, perfect for pale gundabads. I end up doing a few layers of this, because uh, it's a bit thin, but doing it this way builds up the colour much better anyway. Also, apologies about my hand getting in the way in some of these shots, I do swap the angles around a bit. And there's the angle swap. I'll keep playing with the angles throughout this video. Um, if you're a veteran of my videos, you'll notice the quality jump, but I'm still getting used to the new camera. Next, I give all of the leather a coat of brown. So essentially the kilt kind of thing and the backs of the legs as well. I use Rhinox hide for this. And I also did put a touch of an old Citadel foundation paint called Calfan Brown into it, but it's so minor, so I wouldn't worry about it if you don't have it. Then, with Kemri Brown, I paint his lovely beard. I love this part of the model. When unpainted, it actually looks a little odd, but as soon as you get the brown on there, it starts looking actually like Bolg. I mean, good or bad old general. I mean, Keeper of the Dungeons. There you go, that's it pretty much base coated for now. You can see I've used some quite sickly looking tones for his hair and his skin, just as you'd expect for someone in the presence of the necromancer so often. Now to add a splash of colour though, with Mephiston Red. It's the first time I've used this for a base coat and it's alright, though definitely a tad too bright for what I want it for. I'd actually recommend using Corn Red instead, but this one certainly works well enough. I use this to paint the furs and what I can only describe as feathers. Maybe they're a little red tassels, I don't really know, but if you watch the extended version of the Battle of the Five Armies, Galadriel blows him up, tassels and all. Either way, red, there's definitely red on him. I paint the whole bit red and I will paint the black back in later. At this point I go back and fill in some more spots that I'd missed or decided to paint in different shades than I'd originally intended. So more lead belcher on the armour I missed and then some more Rhinox hide onto the bones protruding from his back, which by the way I decided to leave exposed. There are two swords in the kit, but rather than stick them both on, uh, which one of them is over covering up the bones, I left the big one off his back and stuck it on his side instead and I've just kept the little dagger for a bit. Then I use Pro Painter Magic Wash to make him look good. That's Devland Mud or Agrax Earthshade Wash for you. I soak the guy in it essentially, leave no crease unshaded. Uh, once that's dry, I drop a bit of Nuln Oil onto the metals. Mm -hmm. 
More washing now with Caribou Crimson to give that red some more life and shade it too. I don't think we'd have needed all of these shades for the red if I'd used a darker red at the start, by the way. And a final wash on the metals of Norm Oil Gloss to make those metals shine a bit more. The Keeper of the Dungeons has probably never washed this much in his life. Now, after all that washing, we go back to the skin to start defining those beefcake legs. So I return to Nurgling Green for that. It's fairly straightforward, just paint the bits which are standing out from the defined recesses and leave those in the darker shaded tones. Then with Doombull Brown, I start work on the leather work we've already painted in Rhinox. I'll revisit it properly in a bit, but put a layer over and make sure you leave the darker brown in the recess. Now we're moving on to the details, so you can see that he's wearing skeletons woven into his armour. I can only assume he had a bone to pick with some of his enemies. Apologies, but I do love a humorous joke. Very good. Anyway, uh, with Avalon Sunset I start work on the first layer of that suit of bones. This is a yellow base to give it that bleached look rather than the sort of gory red skeleton look that you might sometimes get. Make sure you get all of the bones, there are some tucked away on the spine where the sword is usually glued, and some on the shoulders too. Now we return to that leather with some highlights with a mix I concocted using half scrag brown and half doomble brown. With it I just pick out the raised edges on the folds of leather and on what I think is leather armour. But as with many Middle Earth miniatures, you can easily interpret one material as another. What I see as leather armour could easily be rags or fur or even plates of steel. So go with what you fancy, it, it doesn't always have to match the movies either. After having missed the bones on his spine and painting them yellow, I whack out bleached bone and paint that on all of the skeletal areas. I actually don't leave much of the yellow showing through, but I find that this yellow in particular gives a very good base coat, especially over a dark colour, and some in the recesses makes it look nice and dried out. Now what I'm doing is mixing the rest of that bleached bone into the skin mix, so I've got a natural highlight for the skin. Often painting something well quickly is about things like this, being confident and willing to mix things at the right time. Often I mess up the order I do things in and I'm a bit slapdash, but by doing things like highlighting this skin now, you can make for a quicker job and make it just as effective. So with that Nurgling and Ashabti mix, I pick the very tips of the muscles out. The model is so beautifully detailed, it really is a terrific sculpt, and it makes it painting so damned easy, so that's all I do, just pick out the details. You can see I keep spinning it round, with so many textures on here you can guarantee that I'll miss a piece of skin hidden away somewhere, so just keep spinning it round looking for it. And then accept the inevitability that you'll be back to this colour soon, that's why a palette like mine is so useful. Now with Scrag Brown we return to that leather once more for a final highlight. Notice I'm flipping back and forth between leather and skin a lot, again for speed as I mentioned earlier. If you leave the skin's first layer drying while you start on leather, then it'll be ready for the next layer while the leather dries and so on, uh, flicking backwards and forth until you're done. People often say the Middle Earth range requires a lot of shades of brown, and that's true, but it's worth noting that here I actually quite like the look of just one shade of brown over pretty much all of the material on the model, mainly because with the light skin tone and the red you already get so much variety. Now we're getting close to finishing, so I start detailing his beard, and he's depicted with blood dribbling down there in the movie, so I really water down some Caraberg Crimson and start dabbing it on. This is to give the background layer of gore, we'll add some more fresh stuff in a bit. Now using a very, I'll stress that, very watered down Nagaroth Knight purple, I scoot around giving a little shade into the recesses of the muscles. It helps to find them, but it also gives another hint at the sickly nature of the Keeper's home in Dol Guldur. Again, the model's definition really helps here, but do be careful how much of the shading you apply. 
Now onto that feathery tassel thing on his back. With Mephiston Red, I return to highlight everything on it. Now I will end up covering some over again in black for contrast, but I decided to do everything in the red highlight first so that I can easily decide where the colour needs to be broken up. It really does brighten up the model a bit though with that red. And there I touch up his beard with a bit of that red as well to make that gull look nice and fresh. While near his beard, I notice that the metal plates in his face aren't done yet, so I whack some rune fang steel onto those. I'll shade them again right at the very end to make them look a little less bright. And while I'm using that, I start highlighting the rest of the sharp edges to give everything a nice bit of sheen to it. Don't forget the shiny boots! Now we need to bone up on the skellies. Just to finish them off, I use the appropriately named old GW paint Skull White to highlight them. Though, tibia, honest, any white will do. Just use it to bring brightness to those white areas, but there's really no need to do the whole thing. This is mainly about providing contrast to the rest of the dark clothing and armour. Then, now we're on to the neatening up stages, and actually they're not always essential, especially if you're not really scrutinising. But by using black, I neaten up some of the straps so they're super dark leather, and I then highlight them with storm vermin fur, just to make sure it doesn't look too flat as a colour. I try to make straps on the shoes and on the wrist as both brown and or black for variety. He's really starting to look ace at this point, don't you agree? Here I'm going... Here I'm going back over some of the brown leather I'd mistakenly painted either as skin or as black leather. As I mentioned earlier, for me this is a learning process. One-off models like this never go perfectly, so don't be worried if you're going back over things and over things again. That's to be expected. Perhaps different if you're going over the 50th Goblin Town Goblin. Finally, over a third layer a on unit, those black leathers but with a dawn stone. Here anyway. we're talking extreme edges or even just simple dots at points of light to make it a little shiny. And now I do what appears to be an unnecessary highlight with a mix of Talon sand and Rhinox hide. It does brighten up the leather on the arms and make it look a little bit different to the rest of the browns, but if I'm honest, I can't see being essential at all. I'm not, I can't remember my thought process for why I did it. Looking at it now, I'd say that's basically done. But it's such a, a lovely model that I do want to add a little extra pizzazz to it. So with Blood for the Blood God technical paint, I just add a bit more shine to the gore on his beard. Don't overdo it though. It's not some cartoony Warhammer fantasy model. It's meant to be a little bit more realistic than that, but a little touch will zhuzh it up. Then voila, Azog, I mean Bolg, I mean good adult general, I mean the keeper of the dungeons. Genuinely one of my favourite Middle-earth sculpts, a pleasure to paint genuinely, and well done to the sculptor behind it for getting this released after so long. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's Edgar Ramos, so hats off to you uh, if you're still sculpting and, and maybe if you're watching this video, who knows, I doubt it. But uh, thanks very much, and thank you very much to the Middle-earth team for bringing this model out again. There was really no need to, um, there already is a keeper of the dungeons, but this one is so much nicer than the other one. And if you've enjoyed this, take a look at my other videos, and if you have a request for something for me to paint or to do a gaming video or anything go to patreon.com slash battle games in middle earth sign up there and you can request a video until next time thanks for watching